him to suppress that. There's an economic interest in stealing things. So we see that that works, that effort that goes into concealing some type of information is an economic signal. It's giving off a signal saying this information is important. It will do something about this release. That's why people work and spend their time to restrain it. Because those individuals who know it best, the people who have authored it, they perceive that it's going to change things. So we preferentially go after this sort of information because we can see this signal and give it off. And because other sorts of other sorts of information already have economic incentives to keep them around and get them into the um, this sort of information doesn't, and it can achieve just the sort. So, both in terms of our long-term ideological view that civilization needs good information for good decisions to happen, uh, and in our short-term view that you can achieve quick, fast, cheap, just reforms. Um, by going after that particular type of information uh, over other types. Um, this is sort of a good way to behave. It's, it's a good, safe project. Because even if a uh, long-term view doesn't pan out, that um, individuals and civilizations need accurate information to manage their lives, even if that's distracted or that never eventually, um, we know that in the short term, uh, Every week, we are achieving important main reforms. Right. Right. So, in a sense, you are uh, manifesting the uh, the uh, possibilities of the internet in, in its truest form. A lot of what's been going on since the internet was released has been um, experimentation in free speech. But you are sort of boiling it down to the essence. We've drawn a line in the sand, right? Uh, and no other group yet has drawn that line, and we've done it consistently. Right, right. When we publish something, we will never unpublish. We will fight with all the tools that are technical, political, and legal to make sure something is not unpublished. And any material of political relevance um, or ethical or diplomatic uh, or historical relevance, that's our criteria, uh, that is suppressed, we will accept and so that's, our, that's our line in the sand that we have consistently enforced. Um, and previously no one has consistently enforced that. So this is yes, part of this revolutionary ideal. And that, I suppose that ideal has um, influenced us, but also these other factors about how do you guide civilizations and um, how do you achieve justice. It all, all come together to try and do something uh, that is clear and right. that seems to be worth it. Yes, and, and uh, we, uh, it's, it's an honorable uh, job that's been done so far and uh, looking at it in, a, in the kind of long-term perspective that you're drawing up now, uh, this, this has uh, really uh, the uh, potential for what, when sort of the society and the political structures adjust to this, which is a process that might take a couple of generations or that we really don't know, but it's already started, we can see that. Uh, we we uh, have the uh, outlinings here for a different kind of society, really. I hope so. Uh, we have seen that by being the free press vanguard, by drawing this line in the sand and placing ourselves and our defenses there, we are opening up a space for everyone else behind us. So um, we are now the status quo. Uh, in that we have been publishing for three and a half years consistently uh, in this model and managed to defend ourselves. Um, so, although we're, we're certainly the, the free press vanguard, we're a vanguard that has been able to keep itself in that position successfully. Uh, so, everyone who publishes less aggressively 
is normal. Right, so we've created that space behind us and we're changing the views about what is normal and correct for publishing. So that's something that's really very nice to enable easier publishing for every other media organization or every other group, human rights group, or anyone who's publishing on this. Um, of course, the work is still a long way from being done. I mean, many, many other groups uh, are attacked legally and illegally uh, every day, um, and the material is removed. Um, but for those people who are intent on defending their material, um, we have shown it can be done. We are also providing market disincentives for censorship. You know, we, one of our promises is if there is material that is political, ethical, diplomatic or historical significance, that someone else publishes and it is attacked, we will republish it. So when we republish it, it means it's not going to go away. We will then defend it, uh, and the fact that we publish it then tends to draw extra attention to that material. So that provides a strong market disincentive for attacking the original publisher in the first place. And we have done that successfully uh, or with many cases, but especially in the UK, where the um, press regime is, is really quite bad. And so there's 300 secret gag orders presently in effect in the UK. Those are injunctions on the press where not only can the press not mention something, but the press cannot mention uh, that it cannot mention the injunction. It's sort of an Orwellian uh, injunction. The other point I'd like to raise is you, you mentioned uh, bringing freedom of speech, the in internet. Um, that the internet by itself doesn't give freedom. The internet makes publishing cheap. So it doesn't give any extra freedom. That freedom is something that you bring to the internet and you can bring it to the internet. So that's very important. You, you can actually do that because the publishing costs are cheap. But to some degree, the centralized internet publishing uh, is very, sen very censorship favorable. So in 1954, when uh, Stalin died, the head of the KGB, Beria, uh, fell out of favor very quickly. And in the Encyclopedia of the Soviet Union, there was a section on Beria. And uh, the Soviet government posted out to all the libraries a replacement page for Beria, which was an expanded section about the Bering Strait a body of water between Vladivostok and Alaska. But of course, this was very obvious. This had to go out to every library and then, you know, they stuck it in and if you went to that section of the encyclopedia, you said, what is this? There are two pages here with glued together what's going on. Um, and you could even then peel it off. Um, but now we have seen uh, these cases in the UK where even a, a, a paper like The Guardian, who um, is a non-profit organization run by a trust duty is to guard the body politic in the UK and does actually have a history of fighting some important legal cases removes from its archive permanently and secretly uh, information that litigious uh, billionaires in the UK do not want and once those articles are removed, and it is not just The Guardian, it is, it is a whole range of papers, and including the BBC. Once that information is removed, and you go to look at those web pages, you just see page not found. You don't see that this page has been removed after a legal assault. You see page not found, and if you go into the indexes, there's nothing there in the indexes either. So 